Hey dude, how's it going? I uh, just wanted to show you uh, the guitar that I was telling you about in uh, the comment. So uh, this is a shape I developed over the last uh, few months, along with another one that uh, I have a prototype for, but I won't show you that because it's kind of a disaster at the moment. Anyway, this is real quick. This body is made from something called ambrosia maple, uh, otherwise known as wormy maple. It's got lots of uh, streaks in it, got tons of little uh, wormy pinholes in it. As you can see, uh, they are sort of throughout the body, but uh, they're easily filled. And I would never use this for a neck, uh, but uh, for a body, it's just fine. Uh, moving up here, this is Jatoba for the fretboard. Uh, this is a 25 and a half by 25 and one quarter inch scale. So it is a multi-scale guitar. It's very, very subtle. Uh, the beauty of this is that the zero fret, I'm sorry, not the zero fret, but the parallel fret is actually the bridge. So you can use any standard bridge that you want, and it saves a lot of headache looking for specialized hardware. Uh, six inline tuners, uh, Fender style construction on the headstock here. I'll flip the guitar over now. Uh, that is my proprietary uh, headstock shape. Uh, feel free to copy it though, I don't really give a shit. Um, Got a stripe of, uh, uh, sorry, a strip of maple down the center here with a little bit of figure in it. Uh, the rest of the neck is Jatoba. Uh, got some really cool uh, Grover locking tuners that are just kind of sitting in place right now. Uh, Going to drill the pilot holes for the screws. And uh, the back of the instrument, it's got a pretty hefty neck joint. Uh, seven, uh, 10, 24 bolts actually, with washers in the holes as you can see. So that's a way to kind of get around uh, having to use that specialized sort of cup washer hardware that you see. Uh, I'm just working, um, you know, kind of by instinct. A lot of this is just a learning process for me. I have carved a bit of relief into that joint, as you can see. Uh, but there's pretty good access there. It's quite comfy. The back is uh, not maple, but it's actually made out of bamboo. And I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, that used to be a tray table for eating your dinner in front of the TV. Uh, I got it brand new and never used it. And then I saw it sitting there and I was thinking, well, that'll probably work. So a couple of ideas that I have. Obviously, uh, control panel is going to go sort of, uh, sorry, access to the controls is going to go right around here. I'm thinking actually of putting a Fender style, a Fender Stratocaster style um, output jack there on the back so that you can access both of this curve and this curve back here uh, when you're in the seated position. So it does enable you to have a bit of an ergonomic advantage. Uh, so you don't have to sit it on your right leg, you can put it on your left if you want. Um, truss rod access is actually from the bottom of the neck. I always prefer to do it that way uh, if I can, simply because I think having a void of uh, empty wood up by the headstock is not necessarily the best. These are simple uh, plastic dot inlays. Uh, got a whole bunch of little plastic rods of different diameters from a hobby store locally here. And, uh, in, you know, just drill the hole, stick them in, glue them in. And they're, they're really good. They're seamless pretty much. Sorry for the focus there. And uh, the final sanding and radiusing has been done on this fretboard. I'm going to have to deepen the slots a little bit. Uh, I am tentatively marking out for a tunematic which is going to be recessed. Um, I got one from my local uh, Long & McQuaid music store here in uh, Canada, Halifax, Nova Scotia, in fact, uh, at a pretty reduced rate. I got it for like a, like 50 bucks, brand new, uh, Tone Pros Locking System 2. Uh, it's a little bit tall as it is for the height of the fretboard from the body, but of course you can recess it in. Um, not sure how much uh, string I'm going to have behind. I've kind of marked that out too. The pattern might change. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the body is carved uh, for some comfort here. We've got a little arm contour and of course we've got the belly cut there. All in all, it's turning out really, really nicely. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe putting three pickups in this guitar. Uh, it might uh, turn out to be P90s. And I'm sorry for the focus on my phone. It seems to be kind of out of whack. There it goes. <clears throat> so yeah. Hopefully this will be done within the next month or two. I have a job. I'm a, out of my house for 10 hours a day, so I don't have time to work on it during the day, but my weekends are pretty much filled up with this. And I'm going to show you another one that I built. It's the same shape, 
It's a slightly different version of the same instrument. Uh, I'm thinking of actually offering two models with the same shape. Uh, as you can see, this one is also multi-scale. This one actually has its, uh, its parallel fret at the nut. And this one has a tilt back headstock, much like a Gibson guitar would have, with a volute. Um, now, this guitar uh, is essentially a prototype. Uh, the pickup is in there. The controls are in there. It's not wired together yet. Uh, this guitar is a little bit smaller than the one that I just showed you across the width, about three quarters of an inch overall. Um, I'm not a really big dude. I'm about uh, five foot seven, like 150 pounds. So uh, a standard electric guitar kind of looks a little bit big on me, to be quite frank. And I built this for me. Uh, but there might be some people out there who would appreciate something that's a bit smaller. So across the narrowest part of the body here, we're looking at about nine inches or so. Um, and then across the widest part down here, I think it's about 13 or 14, maybe 13 and a half. These are hip shot solo bridges. I hate them with a passion. I will never use them again. Uh, ask me about that again later. Uh, now, a couple things about this guitar that I'm not going to repeat again. Um, this one doesn't have any carving on the neck joint. It has fewer uh, attachment bolts. Uh, same kind of belly carve, but as you can see here, this ugly feature uh, was kind of a brainstorm that I had to put the output jack on the back of the guitar, forgetting, of course, that the Fender Cup style ones that you'd see on a Stratocaster exist. Uh, and it took a lot of time and effort to create this huge pocket which ultimately just reduces the weight of the instrument, and unfortunately now the uh, the guitar does dive a little bit. Uh, but this one's just for me. Uh, this is a homemade finish. It turned out okay. Uh, I think I'm going to be outsourcing the finishing work to somebody for the short term until I can get a booth uh, and a proper um, evacuation system. But all in all, I think I'm going to call this guy here with the pick guard, uh, maybe the sport version. Uh, and the other one here, maybe more of like a uh, traditional or standard model. Uh, but the, the body shape itself, the model is called the Vaganza. Um, it is a real word, but uh, not many people know what it is. It kind of means to wander or to walk, uh, like wanderer, maybe, something like that. Uh, ultimately, you know, the model name is, uh, you know, superfluous to uh, the performance of the guitar. And thankfully, uh, you know, the one that I've got completed here, although it's not wired up, it plays like a gem, uh, stays in tune, uh, really, really stable. It's got a truss rod, uh, two carbon fiber uh, uh, stiffeners in the neck, as does uh, the traditional here as well. And um, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, getting my website up and running as soon as I possibly can. And uh, it's all going to hinge on maybe selling this one. I'm going to make a case for it and also a custom-made hardwood stand. Uh, as you can see, it's an asymmetrical body, so it's going to have a little trouble uh, conforming to a regular guitar stand. And uh, depending upon how all that costs out, uh, we'll see, uh, you know, I might uh, have enough, uh, get enough uh, profit off of it to uh, get some proper tools. I do this all by hand. Uh, I have a hand drill, a hand router, uh, and... Those are the only two, oh, and a jigsaw. Those are the only three power tools that I actually use. Everything else is done by hand. So a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, but hopefully uh, we, can, uh, we can have some success with this. Anyway, I hope you like it, and I hope we can keep in touch. Uh, I really dig your channel. I think you've been doing some cool stuff. Thanks, man.